It is good for us to be here. Jesus will not rebuke us for saying such things here as he rebuked Peter on the mount. We are listening to the Son in whom our Lord is well pleased. My topic that I chose is the hidden gospel from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. Paul says, if our gospel, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. So let, let's think for a moment about, about hiding. Why, why do you hide something? You hide something for its value. It's worth something to you, and you don't want to risk messing it up, losing it, breaking it, ruining the value of that thing. So you hide it. <clears throat> something can have sensitive information. Where do you keep documents that contain information about your bank account, your credit cards, things that are very crucial that you have and only you? What do you do with those things? You hide them. You put them away somewhere so that you can protect that information. And that's, that's the intended goal. When you hide something, that's what you want. You want to retain the value and you want to protect the information in those two examples. Well, God hides his valuables. Here's an example. Moses was hidden in the cleft of a rock when the Lord revealed himself to him, just the hinder parts. Moses was hidden in the cleft of a rock. And the Lord hides this gospel as well. But if it is hidden, if it's hidden, it's hidden to them that are lost. So why, why would the gospel be hidden? Didn't Christ die for all? Didn't in due time Christ die for the ungodly? Very, that, that is true. It is hidden to them. It is not hidden from them. And this, this is when the light bulb came on for me. Is It's not hidden from view and only those... There is a way in this that this perspective is correct. That the Lord only reveals it to such as he chooses. But this is what helped me understand. It is hidden to them that are lost. It's just hidden to them. And so change that emphasis a little bit. It helped me understand what Paul is trying to say here. Verse 4 goes on to say, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine unto them. So it, it makes sense. If a person is blind... They don't see things that we see. It's hidden to them. But does their capacity affect the reality? Just because I can't see this, does that mean it's not there? Just because I can't see it. These are ones who have been given over. That the light of Christ might not shine upon them. The God of the world blinds those who don't believe. And to them, the gospel is hidden. <clears throat> but herein is a blessing. The Lord did say, seek and you will find. And he exhorted us to call upon him while he is near. That means he's near. If he's telling us that, he's here, he's close. So why then, why would Paul say something like this? The fact that it's hidden to some means that it's revealed to others. And we are in the camp of those who the light has been shed upon. Amen. We have been given ears to hear and eyes to see this truth that has been hidden from some who would otherwise corrupt it. <clears throat> I give thanks for this. If it is hidden, that means God doesn't want to hide it. God wants to reveal this gospel to us, and he has. He wants to give us understanding in it. He wants to let this word have free course that's his character. That's what he wants to do. His desire is for this. So if it is hidden, it's only hidden to those that are lost. But that's of, that's of less significance because it's been revealed to us in Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. The hidden wisdom. It's been revealed to us. 
This mystery is not a mystery anymore. The hidden wisdom has been revealed to us in God. So what is the result of that? The Lord doesn't give us something and expect us to do nothing with it. What is the result of this hidden wisdom being shown to us? Let's go over to Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. You are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. So now, now look, at what, look at what we can do. We can run because there are no distractions. We can fight because there is no more heavy burden. We can obtain because we're free. We can lay hold because our chains fell off. We have a door of utterance because our tongue has been loosed to speak the things which we have seen and heard. This is the hidden mystery has been revealed to us so that we are hidden. And that's, where God, that's what God is doing. He's bringing many sons to glory and he's created an environment in which for us to work. He showed us these things and now we are hidden. When we are in the sanctuary, we are hidden. And this is such a marvelous thing to see that the gospel is hidden to those who would pollute it, but it's revealed to those who are hidden by it. And I give, I give glory to God for showing me these things. And I give thanks that it's been revealed to me. I heard some of the discussion yesterday of your brethren testifying of what the gospel has done for you. And so now I'd like to tell you what the gospel has done for me because the Lord revealed it to me. It's not hidden to me. I give thanks that the Lord shows me I can't and that I won't unless Jesus comes before anything else. The Lord has pulled my legs out from under me and said, okay, you want to try it? Go ahead and let me try it. And look where it got me, crying out to him for help because I couldn't do anything. And the gospel comes to proclaim good news that Christ helps you get out of that condition. It helps you fight. It helps you obtain. It helps you lay hold. And all of these things that the Lord is willing to give us, all things that pertain to life and godliness in Christ. And this message has been revealed to us.